Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we want to remind everybody that uh, our creed here at Bear Wozniak Adventure is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And I think people involved in the new evangelization in the Catholic Church are in for the ride of their life. Uh, it's almost like being swept up by a tidal wave. You know, the, once you say yes to the Lord, uh, get ready for the just get ready for uh, the ride of your life. And we have a, a, f a friend of ours, uh, Taylor Scroll. He's probably going to be our most interesting interview that we've ever had. He has his own radio show. He's a Catholic musician. He uh, works a lot with young people, and uh, and so uh, and he and he has this this strange website, Forte catholic.com i don't even know what forte means is that fortes or what is that taylor what does forte catholic.com mean so my name is taylor and my nickname growing up was tay so it's a website for me i'm just kidding that's not what it means oh, forte what is no okay it's, I would, yeah no i it's a stupid joke that i tell that is never funny but i continue to say it none over of your jokes are yeah. funny taylor okay well uh bye bear it was nice I'd talking with you. We'll yeah. be back next week with more <laughs> of the Bearwastic Adventure. Do, 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 do. Uh, okay. No, yeah, so forte means loud in, in, in music or also in Italian, but I don't know how Italian, the word forte in Italian becomes all the musical terms. But as a musician, I was a music major in, in college, and I'm just very loud, so I'm essentially the loud Catholic. I always thought forte meant skill at something, No. Well, it absolutely does, but I don't have any, so I just had to go with loud. In other words, you're like saying, I'm I'm a forte Catholic. That's my ministry. I'm like really, really good at being a Catholic and really loud at being a Catholic. I think that basically describes you. See, I, I specifically just go with the loud because I don't think I'm actually all that great at being Catholic. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, you know, your biggest challenge is you got that big old anchor hanging around you, that ball and chain Dennis, the guy from Texas A&M. Yeah, I thought you were talking about my wife for a second, and I actually was going to hang up with you. But, <laughs> yeah, Dennis is over here. He's uh, in our studio helping us make all this work because I'm not oh, smart enough. Oh, that's why it took us an hour to get you ready for the interview. You Absolutely. had a Texas Aggie helping you. Okay. It's all Dennis's fault. Well, people don't know that I've met Dennis in the past, and I am a Baylor. I went to Baylor University, and Baylor is so much better than Texas A&M. But they're our arch, they're our arch enemies. Oh, he's coming for you. You're tempting me to get on the line now. We used to we used to have uh, uh, homecoming <laughs> uh, uh, battles with uh, with Texas A and M when they were part of our I think it was the old Southwest Conference, but we don't get to battle them anymore. So, but hey, I got to. Will you ask uh, Dennis one question for us, Taylor? Does sure. he hate Baylor or does he hate University of Texas more? Go ahead, go ahead, Dennis. I hate TU more. Me too. It's U T O. But so at least we but, have but some. A he, ha he hates T-U more. See, he's uh, Aggie. He doesn't know how to spell. But it's I hate, University of Texas. I hate Baylor almost as much as I hated that mixed drink you bought me and I, you made me drink. It wasn't very good. <laughs> you probably – I didn't, th I didn't, think, you, I didn't think you'd remember it. Is this my interview? This I didn't think you'd remember it. Hey, yeah, he, he brought me into it. <laughs> hey, okay, so I – mean, You'll love this. And, yeah, I had to, I had to fake like I liked it while I was drinking, you, drink, <laughs> drinking and, and visiting with you. And so – I loved your company, but the drink you bought me was terrible. Well, I was I was thinking you wouldn't remember after you drank. <laughs> but it, we got but it, we 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 got a Taylor scroll here is much more important than any Texas Aggie. At least that's what Taylor told me. Uh, uh, but it's, Taylor, see, it's an odd thing because I'm I'm not an Aggie myself. I live live in Aggie country. I'm recording in an Aggie studio. But uh, y for those watching on the on the YouTube, you can tell I may or may not be winking. So we'll just go with that. Well, th you know, the things we just said, they may just turn off this interview. We well, one of up. us is going to before it's all over. <laughs> hey, so ta Taylor Scroll is one of, is a, is a different sort of cat. He's uh, you're a musician. Your music is really cool. I am. Well, thank you. They're the first person to ever say that. And Other you, than my mom. My yeah. mom likes it. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, but you. But you, mostly, what you're doing is worship type music, right? That's one of the things you do is is uh, in your ministry is is uh, lead worship and and uh, right. It's mostly yeah, it's the worship type music, more like liturgical type. Stuff yeah, so a, a lot of like contemporary worship, and I do bring uh, some of that contemporary worship into the mass. You know, kind of, I'm one of those uh, mixing of flavors. You know, I'll do a contemporary song that fits with the mass, and then you know, "Holy God, We Praise My Name" is the next song, and try to you know try to bring these it, things together, bring the bring the old and the new together, like you and I talking. But you have a great voice. I, I dig on I dig on your Thanks. voice and your style <laughs> of music. But really, and you do a lot of conferences. Uh, 
really focused on the young people. I want to be, we're, we're we're before we go get back and learn a little bit more about you. I want to ask you a question. What do you see as the number one challenge right now, uh, reaching or or that the young younger generation is? I'm talking about young adults, like 16, and then up to the maybe mid mid 30s or late 20s. That group of people. What do you see as their biggest challenge right now? Uh, one of the biggest ones is just that there's so much else going on, and I th I think I can speak into this not only because I work with people of this age, but because I am still in this, you know, closer to the high of that age range, but still in that age range where even me as somebody who's trying to live as a Catholic, there's so many other options. There's video games, there's Netflix, there's YouTube, there's your great show. There's all these other things vying for, for our time. And a lot of people my age and in this young adult bracket, it's not that we hate faith or like e e even people that do walk away from the church church they're not walking away because necessarily they hate the church or they disagree with the church a lot of them just walk away just because there's they in their mind better things to do or other things to do with their time i mean you even see that in terms of uh, people leaving the church because oh i go to this e evangelical church and their work and their music is so much better it's as if we need to be entertained you know we go we we go to mass to worship the lord and to give to give our hearts to the lord but what do you what is happening with the younger generation in terms of like um, uh, just the belief that God exists at all? There's a there's a it's cool to be an atheist these days. What what are you seeing there? Yeah, I, th I think a lot of it. Yeah, there are some some people, some young people that'll that'll be atheists to rebel. I think a lot of people though are just kind of going through through life and not necessarily making the choice to walk away. They just go to these go to these other avenues like you were saying but we're, like we were talking about earlier so it's like it's like um they kind of put god on the shelf because they got better things to do right yeah it's and like it's uh i could pray or i could watch it you know netflix will ask you continue watching would you like to continue watching it's like well, yes you wanna i would <laughs> yeah you want to pray you want to continue watching it's like i'm probably going to hit continue watching and it's just yeah. kind of that constant struggle where it's a slow fade away you know people are a lot of young people are are super bought in and like even as you mentioned it's like um going to non-denominational places where they're being entertained. It's, it's really interesting because that is a, a very prevalent thing that people will will discuss and talk about. But a lot of times that is like the third option for people who leave the church. The number one thing is they weren't that they that they will say is that they weren't being fed spiritually. That the you know and I think there is this there is this like where part of the entertainment value does play a part in it. But I, I would offer you know, one of my big taglines is make Catholicism fun again. Because, like, yes, the Mass is where we go pray. Yes, the Mass. But if, if the homily is terrible and the music is bad every single week, it's going to get really hard to I'm do gonna, that. I'm going to tell you, honest, Taylor, um, I'm not going to name what church. It's not the one I go to in Florida. But when I'm in Hawaii, I drive all the way up to the North Shore to go to the monastery to go to Mass. But if I go to a certain church here closer to my home, I bring my rosary and I pray the rosary during the homily because it's excruciating. Not only is it not only is it boring, but it's not true to, true to Catholic teaching sometimes. So oh, wow. I just pray the rosary. So I get what you I, I get what you or it's like someone didn't even think about what they were going to say. They just get up and start talking. We understand all that. Uh, That's my show, actually. Yeah. What? <laughs> just you, get up and start talking. <laughs> no <Yeah. preparation. laughs> but I mean, you know, there there is that. But but I if you really know your faith, you know that Christ is present in the Eucharist and. Uh, it's over. It's an overwhelming, uh, compelling. Uh, I was, you know, what w someone told me. Someone called me the other day who knew me back in the day. He'll probably be listening to this podcast. Uh, he lives in the Philippines now, and he sees my sun, my morning ocean sunrise catechisms. I do fifteen minutes every day. Yeah. And he said, "Dude, I didn't know you're so into your faith. And you know, I isn't kind of Catholic and Protestant pretty much the same thing? Isn't it just Mary and and this?" And I go, "Well, no. Uh, Martin Luther's, you know." understanding of of the human condition is much different than catholics he thinks we're basically all human dung with uh, god's grace being like snow that covers us but doesn't see our 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 incomparable worth and the human dignity of jesus becoming man and his solidarity with us by fulfilling all righteousness and 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 he, they don't believe in the the body blood soul and divinity being in the eucharist and they and and this and this and this and he it was just like he got silent for a while and now I see him watching the Ocean Sunrise Catechism every morning when I'm doing it. So there's a there's a great gulf of difference in terms of doctrine, in terms of morals, and in terms of uh, 
of the, the sacramental graces. Yeah, and like you know, like you were saying, it's like, yeah, I've gotten to the place where it's even if the music is bad, even if the homily is bad, I'm still Catholic because of the Eucharist. But one of the things that happened, like when Protestants and Catholics split, you know, and and continue to split, continue to split, is I think, you know, Jesus desires all of us to be one. He desires there to be one church. And there are things that are true, good, and beautiful in like our Protestant brothers and sisters, like the church, the Catholic Church has the fullness of of truth, beauty, and goodness, but like I like to learn some of these things, the preaching, the leading worship from our Protestant brothers and sisters, and bring that into our mass because then I think we're actually getting the fullness that God actually intended. Hey, Amen. I mean, can you just imagine what mass is like in heaven? We're talking with Taylor <laughs> Scroll. He's a uh, uh, very, very boring interview so far. It probably is going to get worse <laughs> before it gets better, uh, but we're very grateful that. Uh, our microphones work. Um, somewhat grateful that Taylor is on the other end of the thanks line. Thanks to Dennis. All but thanks to Dennis. To Taylor's, yeah. Taylor's Girl Forte Catholic. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We, I have been ordered to remind people about our cool new website, uh, deepadventure.com. Brand new website. This was launched in the last few days. Uh, some tremendous uh, work went into that. And uh, we're inviting people to go there and uh, get your free stuff. Uh, uh, join our, uh, our mug club. We also have the Bears Man Cave. Um, we, want you to go, we want you to go to our website, check out our store. Uh, our store has my books. We have the Seven Virtue Cigar Sampler uh, for people. We have uh, coffee cups. We have whiskey tumblers. We have sh uh, beer mugs. We've got all kinds of stuff there for you uh, to be part of what we're doing in the ministry. We, we're inviting you there because by your subscribing to our newsletter, we send you out the radio show each week, and you have a chance then to share it with your friends. We have a woman that came up here yesterday. She said, I need to buy four more of your books I need to give it to my, my I, three more of your books. I need to give it to my three daughter-in-laws. And we need influencers out there just like you who will go into our website, subscribe to our newsletter, and then share that with people. Uh, buy the books and share that with people. Uh, we need the influencers out there. You know, the, the greater, greatest influencers we have out in our audience are the women. They really have had a big impact on, uh, on our ministry and on the men in their lives by participating in our ministry. And also, we want to remind you that this radio show uh, that airs on EWTN. I think it's on about 500 terrestrial radio stations, Sirius FM, shortwave radio. It goes out on all kinds of podcast apps as well. But the fun thing about this show is if you want to see what Taylor Scroll looks like, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, and all of our all of our radio shows now, the last 20 or so, are all uh, video, uh, video. So you can see Taylor, you can see me, and you can enjoy uh, watching the show. And share it with your friends. It's something that's uh, maybe easier uh, for people to kind of hold their attention when it's video and audio, too. But today we have with us Taylor Scroll. He is he's a big part of the new evangelization. He has a, uh, a podcast. He, has a, uh, he, he goes out and speaks to youth and to everyone, uh, giving speaks, uh, talks. And he also leads worship. Uh, Taylor, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Bear. You, here's what I have to say. I was listening to your advertisement for your, your website, and I was about to go. I was about to go, and then you said that the greatest thing about it was that you had to see my face, and I'm like, no, nobody's going to want to do that. No, they do. They do. It's very <laughs> Earlier, we were testing our microphones. You want to show them the, the, the approach I recommended you to hold your microphone? Oh, yes, just like this, to, to make my face look as good as it can. Like yeah, we basically, we have this big old microphone covering his face. It's a... Uh, I think that's your best, the best view of Taylor Scroll, but he yeah, insists see, on. I, I I tried to cover most of my face with with the beard because I don't like it. But then yeah. if I use the microphone, I can cover the other half, and then and then everybody's fine. Yeah, well, Taylor, though, tell us. We want to hear a little bit about your convert your your walk with the Lord, your journey to to where you are right now. Oh, before we do that, what's the name of your radio show, your podcast again? Forte Catholic. Forte Catholic. Making Catholic. Catholicism fun again. Amen. Tell us about your, your, your journey uh, of faith and how you got to where you are right now. I was born into a, into a Catholic family. Um, 
went through, went through CCE, C, uh, all these essentially really, really boring classes. And I knew a lot of things about my faith. I actually, I've always wanted to be the best. So I would learn the Bible stories. I'd learn the saint stories just to be better than the other people in my class, just to know the answers. But I was so bored. And then finally in junior high, I said, mom, I don't want to go to this anymore. Catholicism is super boring. I want to go over to this non-denominational church. And my mom, in all of her wisdom, knowing that I hate waking up very early, said, you know what? I'll let you go to the non-denominational service at 11 if you go to 8 a.m. mass with me. And I actually did. Like, I cared enough about Jesus. I was just bored. So I was like, you know what? I'll make that sacrifice. I'll go to mass with you at 8. She dropped me off at the non-denominational church. And then we did that for almost two years. And uh, it, was, it was a really interesting time. Well, I mean that, that's interesting because you know I I had a I had a journey to myself where I w- was raised Catholic for about uh, d- about ten years. I went to non denominational churches, and what do you find? There are a lot of beautiful people who really love Jesus, right? And and so I I truly like there is where I found found my love for the scriptures. There is where I found my love for preaching, and there is where I found my love for worship music. And then the summer after my eighth grade year, after doing this for around two years. I went to a Steubenville Youth Conference, a Catholic youth conference in uh, southern Louisiana. They're all over the country, but I went to the one in southern Louisiana. And that was the first time that my, my love for the scriptures, my love for Jesus, my love for worship that I found in the, in the non-denominational church and the theology that I had learned growing up in my really, really boring classes, those two things combined at this conference, I was like, wait, I can be Catholic and there can be good music. I can be Catholic and there can be good preaching. I've never heard of such a thing. And and it was that weekend that I truly fell in love with the Eucharist. And like that has been the thing that has kept me in the Catholic Church since. I, I you know, I after that, I was completely bought in, started going back to my Catholic youth group. And uh, yeah, it's been a whole rest of a journey since. But that was kind of the initial moment. Well, where what, I was like, what do you, you know, like, I always hear this when people go to the Steubenville events, that there's this usually a real impact of the presence of the Eucharist. What, 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 how did that happen for you? Yeah, so we were talking a little bit earlier about young people and, and young people in faith. It's, it's one of those things that a lot of young people can be like, oh, faith isn't cool. It's not the cool thing. It's not the people that I'm, watch- that I'm watching these sitcoms. They're not into their faith. The, at- the athletes I like, a lot of them aren't into their faith. But when you're in a stadium with 5,000 of your peers, 5,000 people praising God, kneeling in adoration, kneeling in mass, uh, screaming praise and worship, because at the time, none of us could sing. We're literally just like screaming at God, and for some reason, he thought it was beautiful, you know, that sort of thing. And it's it's one of those good things about being, just feeling a part of something, and feeling a part of something that um, we're all headed toward, common, toward a common goal. We're all striving for this. None of us are perfect, but there is Jesus, and we are all like focused in on Jesus, and the rest of the stuff can just kind of fade away for a few moments. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's the Eucharist that that is the uh, is what will bring us all back uh, to unity. But you think about the big question that Protestants have is like is about the Eucharist and Mary. Those two things seem to be the biggest things. Uh, what do you say to a, to did, what did you say to your friends when they found you were uh, going to be not spending as much time with them and that you were returning to the church? What did you tell them? Well, what was interesting is, uh, like, in junior high, not just because of uh, the non-denominational thing, but also just kind of how friends and non-friendships were, I, I, did, I was friendly with a lot of people. I was an athlete. It's like what my whole life revolved around was sports. And what happened around eighth grade, ninth grade, around the same time is a lot of our other friends were who weren't living for Christ that were, you know, big, we, I grew up in a big party town. Everybody's going and drinking and the whole, you know, litany of sins every Friday and Saturday night. There were four of us, four of us that w- came and h- hung out at my house. My parents had a room above the garage, and that's where we would go and, and hang out. And it was just the four of us, and all four of us, <clears throat> uh, Catholic, uh, non-denominational, Methodist, and Methodist. And the four of us just spent all of our time together we would have uh, you know, male fellowship. We would play video games. We'd talk about life. We'd talk about dating. We'd talk about girls. And we'd talk about Jesus. Like, it was one thing that we all had in common. And we would have these conversations of, like, you know, I'm Catholic. You're a Methodist. Like, what does that mean for us? Mm-hmm. And we would have conversations about the Eucharist. We'd have conversations. So 
a lot of us, I think, a lot of people, Protestants and, and Catholics, can be on completely different spectrums. We ha have all have at least an understanding because we had it. We built up a friendship, and we all have an understanding of what each other believes. And so, a lot of them, they would come to mass with us, like a lot of times, especially during Holy Week, because that there aren't a lot of Holy Week services at their churches. And I'd, I'd have these two Methodist and a non-denominational guy with me at Good Friday and Holy mm -hmm. Thursday, and we would just kind of melded a lot of those things and, and spend a lot of time together. It's really cool. I, I hope we have some younger people listening to this because uh, it, it's there's a verse that says it's good for you to serve the Lord from your youth onward. And I was one of those, too. I, I loved uh, going to catechism. I loved the nuns. I loved getting my little prayer cards when I remember the Bible verses, and I was really intrigued by it. Uh, but I didn't have a personal walk with the Lord. And I said, well, you know, God, if you're there and you're a God of love, why can't I, why can't I feel you? Why can't, why can't I know you? And uh, I was thankful uh, at the age of 19 to have a powerful experience in the charismatic re Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Awesome. And, yeah, just really, it just really uh, uh, anchored me. But I, I wasn't one to go to parties. Uh, before I gave my life to the Lord, I remember being in a social studies class, and this overwhelming feeling came over me that one day I could be a father. And from that moment, all my decisions about how hard I was studying, how hard I was getting working two or three jobs, all of that was because one day I wanted to be a father. It changed everything. And then in time, having that conversion experience with the Lord. But uh, part of my confusion was as I wanted to go deeper with the Lord, I ended up uh, not being catechized properly, not going, not, not understanding. I was getting, the, getting just the, the bubble gum, the, the religious bubble gum part of Catholicism, I didn't understand the depth of teaching, so I drifted away for a little while. And what brought me back was reading the early church fathers. And I didn't drift away from the Lord. I, I drifted into non-denominational land because I wanted to go deeper with God. But finding the early church fathers leads you into this path of Augustine, which leads you to Aquinas, which leads you to the great contemplative saints, which leads you to John Paul II, which leads you to Leo III. I mean, just on and on and on and on and on. We're talking with Taylor Scroll. Uh, he's shaking his head up and down a lot right now. I'm watching him on the YouTube <laughs> version of our show. I'm which disagreeing with you. Yes, because of, but because of course you should. But because uh, <laughs> I was told I had to. Yeah, he's told you have to agree. Yeah, we're talking to Taylor Scroll. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We are have a challenge for you. We want you to go to our YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak YouTube YouTube channel. My social media people are saying we want a thousand more subscribers for the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. If you go there, we have a lot of cool stuff. We have this show is actually aired on YouTube as well as on 500 radio stations with EWTN and Sirius FM. Um, but actually, actually, you can you can visually see this show. Uh, my Ocean Sunrise Catechism is a 15-minute show every morning I do on Facebook Live. It's also all shows up there, so we go through the entire catechism with the ocean and the sunrise and behind me, wherever I am in the world. Even in the Midwest, Taylor, I can make it pretend like the sun's rising over the ocean. <laughs> uh, but um, And then we have some of, my, some of my really cool surfing stuff from back in the day and some of our reality TV shows that we had done uh, prior to our Long Ride Home TV show. So please go. We need to get a thousand new subscribers because that makes a big deal with YouTube as far as what we what they're willing to do for us. So please go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and subscribe. We're talking with Taylor Scroll, and Taylor Scroll's a job in life is to make Catholicism fun again. Was it ever really that fun? Oh, I think it absolutely <laughs> was. I think it absolutely was. You're tell you're telling me. See, I think that I think the scriptures are one of the funniest things that ever happened. And like, I don't want people to take that the wrong way of like that they're not absolutely the truth that God wanted to share. But I'm in this Bible study and and I, and I do this show and like you can't I can't read the scriptures and not think it's hilarious. So there there's there's just so many things like being an apostle would have been one of the like just following around just one of the funniest things that's ever happened. It's like, you know, like think of Thomas. You know, that we get this moniker doubting Thomas just cuz he wasn't at the party the first night. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, it's just like stuff that I would do with my friends. It's like, you'll never guess what happened. Like, Bear Wozniak showed up in this studio. They were like, no, he didn't. And it's like, yeah, well, uh, if he is here, I need to see him and all his tattoos and put my finger on his tattoo. And then a week later, you're here. I'm like, 
oh dang he was yeah. right <laughs> yeah i mean think think about it I, I think it's hilarious that paul got uh shipwrecked three times no i'm just kidding but think about if you're the apostles it's kind of like the big it, it is when you look at it that way uh the miracles jesus did are like kind of like the biggest joke in some ways too i mean uh kind of the biggest twist you know twist at the end of the joke what what else do you think is so hilarious about being Catholic? so i two two favorite stories man like people that are reading the bible and saying it's boring are just reading it wrong so the story in second kings if you're watching on the youtube I have a very shiny forehead, and I'm going to tell you a story about why you can't make fun of bald people. And this exactly. comes straight out of Second Kings. You've heard this story. You're nodding your head. Uh, somehow, you're 8,000 years older than me and still have more hair than me. It kind of makes me angry. But here's the, st <laughs> here's the story for bald head. Uh, Elisha, the prophet, was walking up this mountain, and there were 42 young, young boys making fun of him. Go up, bald head. Go up, you baldy. And so what does Elijah do? He forgives them and says, the Lord loves you. No, he calls down two she-bears, and the she-bears maul the 42 children, and Elijah moves on with his day. <laughs> that's, it, that's hysterical. <laughs> I'm sure their, par their parents thought so. Yeah, it's like, what the heck, Elijah? They, they're just making fun of you. It's like, no, oh, but well, it was me. But the biggest joke of all is like the April Fool's Day joke we had this year. Absolutely. I mean, it was, it was jokes on you, Satan. You know, t tell us about that. Yeah. So it's yeah. So Satan, if you if if you are Satan, try to put your 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 mind in his headspace, which isn't hard for me. It might be harder for some of your listeners. But he, if if God, you've been trying, you've been fighting God for eternity, and God makes himself a weak human. It's like, oh, I can defeat this, right? Like his number one goal was to defeat Jesus, to, to get Jesus killed. And if you, like, watch The Passion of the Christ, you can see him kind of all, m manipulating that and making it happen through all everything that happened. And then he kills him, and he's like, yes, he's so excited. And then three days later, he goes, he's back, I lost, you know. It's it's so funny, man. It's do you, do you, all do you, of it Go ahead, sorry. Do you know the song by Carmen, The Champion? It's an old song. I don't. It's I'm, such a I'm cool song. It has the, it has a musical Dennis tone. Dennis is nodding his head. Dennis knows the it, song. It has a. It, everyone should look it up on YouTube. Carmen's song, "The Champion," C A R M E N. Uh, he uh, he uses kind of Rocky type music a little bit, and uh, it it talks about this 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 uh, cosmic battle where Satan and and Jesus are fighting. You know, like the, the the temptations in the desert and things like that. And then finally, the battle comes to the cross. And uh, Satan's, you know, doing all that he can. And, and you see suddenly Jesus drop his guard. And Satan comes in swinging and uh, knocks him out. And, uh, but God the Father is the, is the referee. He's the judge, right? And there's angels on one side and demons on the other side. And the, the referee starts the countdown. And he starts, and it's God the Father is the referee. And he starts the countdown, you know, the 10 the ten count like this. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and Jesus rises from the dead. You know, he's the cosmic champion. You hear the angels cry, "Oh!" You hear the demons cry, "Oh no!" And you hear the angels cry, "Oh yes!" He's the cosmic champion, and that's the and it's that that's the biggest twist, the biggest joke in, in a sense. You know, um, on Satan. You know, that, that, that he thought he had defeated him. And Jesus killed death. He captured, he destroyed death, and he captured captivity. He took, like, one of my favorite things to do, Taylor, is knife fight. I love, uh, in my martial arts, the ninja the ninja <laughs> realm. I've never heard anyone say that before. That's so well, awesome. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, I, mean, I mean, it's not like with a real blade, but, I mean, <laughs> I, I'll tell you something. I love, I love knife fighting because when the person, the person with knife, they have a lot of confidence in that knife, right? And you actually know where the attack is going to come from. It's going to come from. It's not going to come from their fist or their legs. It's going to come from that knife. And what you do as a as you advance in the martial arts is you learn to stage fights. Like you give your enemy the target you want them to strike, so you don't. So you to some degree can anticipate uh, that they're going to strike there. Like if you want, if you if you block yourself a certain way, he's probably going to come for your throat with that blade. Or if you open your hands up high, he'll probably come for your stomach. Um, so you know where the attack is coming. Jesus set the stage for that fight, and he gave him. He knew the attack would come for, for with death, and he and he showed him where to make the attack. 
And then, and then Jesus uh, uses, in, in, you know, like when someone attacks me, I can, in different ways, of course, just a little flick of the wrist, I can fight their, uh, using their own energy against me. I can do a wrist, a wrist lock, a wrist throw, slash their throat, and put them on the ground using their own weapon. And we were doing a, I was demonstrating this, Taylor, you'll like this, <laughs> in Florida, uh, oh, about three months ago with my friend Gerard. You know, and in Florida, you can carry, you know, you get a license to carry guns. And so we were doing this men's conference, and I said, I need for you to let help me out. I'm going to demonstrate knife fighting because I want to talk about this concept that we've been talking about. And uh, he said, sure, what are you going to do? And I said, well, we're going to do this, this. He goes, okay. So he comes up, and I, I give him a blade, and I have him attack me, and he does what I ask him to do. I, th I uh, do a wrist throw, slash his throat, uh, do an arm bar, take the, take the knife. While I do that, his gun goes flying out of his pocket. <laughs> 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 only in florida yeah. uh, <laughs> but i mean no but it does it does say this was this was satan's uh it, the wages of sin is death this was his great weapon and jesus uh turned that turned the tide on that for us i think bear unless you've talked about this on the air before this might be the first time in radio catholic radio history that somebody's talked about slicing someone's throat i, I just <laughs> want to congratulate you really quickly <laughs> on doing that and and unbeknownst to you you actually brought up the other story that I wanted to share with you about knives and swords. A lot of people know the bald head story. This story, I, I, you probably know it just because of, you know, since you've been around. You probably wrote this story. You've been uh, around for so long. Uh, <laughs> I don't know exactly how to take that, but I'm deeply spiritual. <laughs> deeply spiritual. So uh, in the book of Judges, one of the greatest books of all time, they call it the Great Toilet Flush. We can explain that later. But – um, there is a toilet involved in this story, and the youth that I told I love story. this story. Oh, and it's it's so great, right? Okay, go for it. Go for it. He he goes in. The judge goes in, and Eglon is this terrible leader that's trying to defeat the Jews, and he, uh, the, Ehud, who is the good guy, walks into the chamber, and Eglon is, quote-unquote, easing himself in the cool chamber, which means he's sitting on the toilet. And Eglon is a very fat man. The scriptures make sure that that is um, very clear because the scriptures are hilarious. So Ehud goes and stabs the – I have a gift for you from the Lord. And he stabs him in the belly, and it, the guy is so fat that it, his fat in his belly envelops the sword to where Ehud cannot pull the sword out. So he just runs away, and the, the best part of the story, Ehud, the good guy, gets away. The guards are outside, and they're like, I, he sure has been in that cool chamber for quite some time. So it takes them an hour before they go check on him, and there he is, dead on the toilet. Okay, how about, how about this knife story? When, we get, <laughs> when, David, uh, when David is uh, uh, being chased by King Saul, and so he's hiding in the cave. I, I don't know. If, I don't, it wasn't the cave of Adullam. It was another cave. And, and, and it says that King, that King Saul went aside. So basically, he's relieving himself in this cave. And the unbeknownst to him, David is deeper there. So while he's doing his job, King David comes up with his sword and slices off just a little bit of his, his garment, right? And so then when King Saul goes down the mountaintop, David walks out and said, I could have killed you. It was like a practical joke. You know, I, here's, a, here's the hem of your garment. I could have killed you. You know, why are you chasing me? I'm not your enemy. We're talking with Taylor Scroll. Um, really against my better judgment, I invited him on. I'm <laughs> not really sure how wise that was. He's with ForteCatholic.com. We all we'll make right mistakes. Yeah, we all make mistakes. They call that's called sins. <laughs> uh, the sin of lack of prudence. But we did invite Taylor Scroll for one more segment. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wasnick adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you guys to go to our brand-new website, deepadventure.com. All kinds of cool new features there, and you can, you can subscribe to this our email where you'll get this, this, uh, this uh, radio show sent to you a day early or at least uh, several hours earlier than everybody else, and you can email it to your friends. You can listen to this uh, on all the podcast apps, all the EWTN networks. And what's really cool about this is you can now watch it on YouTube. So if you want to see what Taylor Scroll looks like, when you hear the word Taylor Scroll, I think of a guy wearing a black hat and cowboy boots and a, cow and a cowboy belt. It's exactly what he looks like. You can go to YouTube and, and <laughs> check out Taylor. He's a Texan, right? You're a Texican, right? I so am. I am Tex. I'm Texan. And it's funny that you say Texican because I'm married an Hispanic woman, so we call our kids Tex-Mex. Te Tex-Mex. 
Taylor, what what is the message that you tell young people? What, what, uh, lots lots of them, lots of messages. What 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 what's what's the <laughs> the key things that you feel uh, that they really they really hear and and need to hear? Yeah, a lot of them. Just like you know the story that I shared about myself of knowing a lot of things about Catholicism, but it's just this. It's just a bunch of random things that they know, and it's not all tied together. So the biggest thing that we start off with every every semester is just sharing the charisma, the initial proclamation, the initial gospel message, because because this is what our world needs to hear is that God loves you and has a plan for your life. Like even you, Bear, God loves even you. He loves you and has a plan for your life. Uh, and that's that plan has been wrecked by sin, by original sin, by our personal sin. And there's nothing that you and I can do on our own to, to fix that. So this man named Jesus, God came down, became a man named Jesus, taught us how to live, died for our sins, uh, defeated death, as you so eloquently t- shared the story of earlier, uh, and rose from the dead to defeat that. He's defeated our sin, and all we have to do is give our life to him, commit our, life to, c- commit our lives to him, and join his body, the church. Like, that is the message. 30 seconds. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't have to join a church. Oh, you absolutely do. That's the piece that, piece that a lot of people miss. That's like I think 80% of the Christians out there go, well, I, I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church. I have, yeah. I'm, I'm spiritual, but I'm not very religious. Talk, yeah, so about, are, talk about that for a moment. Yeah, so there, the I mean, there be, are— The need to be part of a body. Right. There are, there are apologists that would give you all of the, all of the theological answers. I'm going to go the practical route. Um, I, I know, like, Bear, you have been in martial arts. You've been in surfing. You've been in all sorts of uh, sports. Jail. Like, jail. Jail. No, jail. no yeah. but I went there. I went there to minister. Yeah, sure you did. Yeah. That's no, what I know, but, but <laughs> no, seriously, I used to go to prison ministry, but uh, I wasn't actually in prison. I don't want to think anybody thinks I'm <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay. So uh, just a practical story to kind of answer your question. My, I was an athlete my entire life growing up from five it's until re- 20. Of really hard to tell. I know. And that's part of the story. Until I was 20 years old, <laughs> I was in peak physical condition. I ran a 447 in the 40. I ran a sub 50, 400. Is this 40 I, feet or 40, 40 yards? 40 meters. 40, 40 meters. meters. Well, wow, that is. Yeah. So okay. I, I used to be good at stuff, Bear. I know a lot has changed, but you're actually on my point. I used to spend five hours a day doing this. And I the big thing for me that I didn't realize, I was working out with my team. I had yeah. other people there. Yeah to push me on other people there that if I wasn't there, I'd be missed. If they weren't there, I would miss them. If, you know, if I'm on a relay team and only three people show up, we can't, we literally can't even compete. We would, we, we lost before we could even start. And then after I retired from, from college track, I put on 15 pounds. I put on another five pounds. I put on another 10 pounds because the hardest thing for me to do, because my entire life I trained with other people. I, I, it's really hard for me to go to the gym by myself. It's really hard for me to go run by myself. It's really hard for me to go lift by myself. How I'm able to do that, the times that I do that, it's when I'm with other people. I'm playing basketball with other people. I'm lifting with other people. I can't do this on my own. I know that for myself. And it's the same thing for me with my faith. I can't live out my faith on my own. If I'm not around the church, I start sinning more. I quit praying. I, I, I don't have people calling me to something higher. And so, like, the importance of community in the faith, like, even starting from the top, the Trinity itself, God himself is a community of people, and he's modeling that for us. Jesus came, had a community around him, and it was actually through that community that changed the world. Uh, I mean, the community is just such a big thing for me. We have to be a part of this church. People, in, like you talked about the early church fathers, people in the early church died for the importance of coming together for the Eucharist and for the importance of community and living that life together. It's a big thing for me. I, I'm a big proponent of community because I know I need it, and I know that young people and everybody in the church needs it. Okay, so going back to your point, uh, re- tell the gospel again, and then, and, then, and then you talk about what we do to enter into that, enter into that faith. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you hear this gospel message, and it's like, what's next? And uh, in, the, in the book of Acts, uh, 242, chap- chap- chapter 2, verse 42, it says, what, what, what was the church? What did the apostles do? What did the early church do? They, they committed themselves to prayer, to community, to breaking bread, and one that I'm forgetting. What is it? Well, they, they, they would gather for the reading of the word and the, and the sharing of the, of the word from the apostles' recollections and then breaking of the bread. And they, and they did it daily. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Under threat of death. Right, know? right, right, so, right. So, yeah, like, and, and like those, are, those become the four pillars of the catechism. 
uh, the learn, learning the faith, the apostles teach. That was the other one, the apostles teaching. Um, learning the faith, sharing the faith, passing on the faith, um, live, committing to a life of prayer, committing to a life of community and sharing things as a community and committing themselves to the breaking of the bread. Like that's our response to, to what Christ did for us is, is gratitude, which is literally what the word Eucharist means, thanksgiving, uh, is gratitude to him. And then also this community praying and living, living a Christian life. Like that is what we are called to do. Okay, so what do you do? What is your what is your prayer life like? You're you're, uh, you're pers- you're seeking God's face. How how does that work out for you in your daily in your, uh, during during a week's time? What do you yeah, what's so your daily routine in prayer and study and? Yeah, daily routine, and I, I, it's fascinating because I ask almost all my guests this question because no one talks about it. I'm really glad that you're on this. Me as a millennial, here's here's what what mine is. Um, as a st- I work I work as a missionary for Ablaze Ministries. Uh, we work in youth ministry. I train youth ministers. That's kind of my my daytime gig, right? Um, we pray together as a staff for 30 minutes a day, and that that could be we kind of rotate who leads it. It could be praise and worship. It could be praying a rosary. It could be praying over each other. It could be a Bible, you know, uh, like Lexio Divina type thing. So that's that's 30 minutes that's kind of built into my day. The other 30 minutes that I'm doing, because you called me out and you said, if you're not praying for an hour, you're a, you're a, a, a what'd you call me, a pansy? A poser. Uh, poser. Well, yeah, you are a pansy too, but <laughs> I, the word I use was poser. Poser. I mean, you called me out, man, because you called me out in the time that I was probably doing that 30 minutes that I was required to for work, and then maybe another five to 10. And like, you, you just called me out without even knowing it, and I absolutely loved it. And that, that's the moment that I realized, you know what? I, I, I might like this guy. I just, just might like him. Um, but for me, I'm a big scripture guy. So I, I use the YouVersion Bible app, and I go through these devotional readings. Um, so that takes about 10, 15 minutes. I use this, uh, this app called Pray, on the go, uh, Pray As You Go. It's, it's awesome. It's essentially, it's kind of like Alexio Divina, but not exactly. It's from these, like, Catholic monks and, and, and a, a few lay people over in Europe, and I love accents, so having British people pray with me is just amazing. It sounds more intellectual. Well, it's so what it is for me, because, yeah, yeah, the British, I see what you're saying, the British people sound more intellectual. They say they make me sound, they make me feel smart, which I'm absolutely not. But um, they would read the daily reading, and they'd ask these poignant questions, and they're praying, or they're playing these, like, meditative songs, like Gregorian chant type stuff, and that's so opposite of, like, the, the typical praise and worship music that I'm doing. So I like to have that balance in my prayer life, and that takes about 10 minutes. And then the other five to ten, it's like the you know praying for people, praying for myself because the Lord knows that I need it. Uh, so that's essentially what most of my days look like. You know what? I'm gonna tell you something, Taylor. I I usually surf at least an hour every day. Maybe it's 90 minutes depending on the surf conditions. And I do a beach walk. That's about an hour every day. You know, on the beach walk, it depends if I'm doing it alone or, or with my wife. Even when it with Cindy, we'll pray the rosary. Um, people go, well, you, that's a waste of time. How can you spend that much time? But I know because I'm physically fit, I can do my mission. And also, surfers don't forget how to play. We fall more than little children. It kind of relieves right. all that, that taking ourselves too seriously. Right. Well, if you're a Christian and you're not spending an hour every day with the Lord, you're not physically, you're not spiritually fit. And the Catholic Church provides us so many ways. Like you mentioned the Laudate app, also or the Universe Dallas app. Um, a lot of my prayer time, though, <coughs> I'll, spend an, you know, I'll spend that basic time of prayer. But I love to study too, church history mm-hmm. or the early church fathers, or uh, you know, just so many great, deep, good, wonderful books that bring me into the presence of God as I'm studying the early church fathers. That's to me, I'm, that's like prayer. I've got Saint Augustine right there with me while I'm reading his his work. We're talking with Taylor Scroll. Taylor, where can people find you? F O R T E Catholic dot com. There you'll find everything. No, we want we want to know what we want to know what your what your address is. I heard the police are looking for you. Where can they find you? One, no, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> okay, like so, a bird at each street. No, but why would they want to go to Forte Catholic? What have you got there for them? We because we're making Catholicism fun again. We've got a great podcast. Uh, it's, it's built for a young adult audience. We've got great guests like you. You came on a bunch of people from uh, other some of your other friends from EWTN. Uh, we're we're there to be half entertainment, half building in, in your spirit, helping you grow in your in your faith life. I, I speak, I lead worship. I love to 
to come out and, and do an event for the young people of your parish, for the whole parish. I did an event for elderly folks the other day. I I, I can do it all. I can do it all. You did, something for, you did something for people like me, really old and over the hill? I did. It was uh, so much fun, Bear. I can't tell you how much better it went than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> and does Dennis show up with you sometimes? Uh, yeah, he's the old one. He's the old yeah, one. Yeah, so, so even though Dennis might come, people might still want to invite you. For some odd reason. Yeah. We're talking with Taylor Scroll, Forte Catholic. That's F-O-R-T-E, ForteCatholic.com. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our uh, BearWozniak.com or DeepAdventure.com and check out our, our site, too. We'll be back next week with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Till then, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha.